Well, this guy finally reached episode 100 and now he wants to quit? Isn't that convenient? All of those requests for video topics are going to go unfulfilled. Perhaps it's really because he couldn't handle reality after facing creationists and debates and having the truth spoon-fed to him. I say, good riddance to him. I mean, is anybody fooled by his intros anyway? I had to investigate. Wow, 100 episodes, over 14 hours, and I don't know how many references. This turned out to be a much bigger undertaking than I expected. When the show started, I just wanted to cover the major creationist arguments in terms we can all understand. I certainly didn't expect to be doing the type of research I've been doing. As with every other season, this season also had plenty of mistakes. In episode 85, I stated that primordial gravitational waves had been observed and it would have seemed I was right judging by popular press about it, but Tim Haynes was good enough to correct me. What is actually being detected is what is known as a B-mode polarization of the cosmic background radiation. Essentially, this polarization is a predicted indirect effect of gravitational waves. This also explains how interstellar dust and gravitational waves can be confused since both phenomena produce B-mode polarization. Thank you, Tim Haynes. I appreciate that. In episode 89, The Origin of Sex, I mistakenly referred to eukaryotic cell division as fission. Snake Guy 76 pointed out that fission is what prokaryotic cells do when their cells divide. Eukaryotic cells divide through mitosis. Much appreciated, Snake Guy 76. In episode 90, Woodpecker, Larry Scott caught my misstatement of the capabilities of the human skull and the woodpecker skull to absorb an impact. They sounded a little high to him, so he checked my references and duly corrected me. The correct amounts would be much lower. A 30 to 45 G limit for humans and 1200 to 1500 G limit for hummingbirds. Good catch, Larry Scott. In episode 91, Fishapods, I discussed Bashirs and referred to them as lungfish. It is not really a surprise that Jackson Wheat caught my grievous taxonomical error. They are, in fact, a primitive form of ray-finned fish. Glad you're watching, Jackson. Thank you. In episode 92, Human Evolution, I mistakenly stated that Denisovans and Neanderthals share a common ancestor with humans 775 million years ago. The ugly gnome caught this immediately, and so did everyone else, apparently. This ancestor is, in fact, calculated to have lived 775 thousand years ago. Thanks to the ugly gnome, and I appreciate everyone who rings in on any of my errors. In this case, another thank you goes out to the ugly gnome, because in episode 93, Gravitational Time Dilation, he also caught another error of mine confusing Einstein's theory of special relativity with general relativity. It is actually Einstein's general theory which describes the warping of space. Another thanks to the ugly gnome. In episode 94, Planetary Magnetic Fields, I described Humphrey's scenario of planetary formation from giant spheres of water. Stubborn programmer was astute enough to point out that I had mistakenly mentioned helium where there would be no helium in a water molecule at all. I have no idea how I would confuse helium and hydrogen, but I'm glad you caught it, stubborn programmer. In episode 95, information, I mistakenly described the collapse of a wave function as collapsing to a wave function. And in keeping with the theme of this year's errata, the ugly gnome once again was considerate enough to correct me. Gotta give some due credit to the ugly gnome. Thanks for looking out. While going over examples of AI in episode 96, Intelligence, I discussed the AI in your phone. Humanime brought up an interesting distinction. The vast majority of what we call AI in phones is actually self-learning, which is distinct from intelligence. I'll look more into that, Humanime. Also in episode 96, I stated that modern processors can perform millions of calculations per second. JC was correct in pointing out that I was grossly out of date with that figure, as modern processors actually perform billions of operations per second. Thanks, JC. A letter makes all the difference. In episode 97, Specified Complexity, I presented a series of 16 ones and described it in binary as 32,767. My calculation was off by one bit, so once again, the ugly gnome gave me a more correct figure of 65,535. Another thank you to the ugly gnome. The most grievous error I've made in this series, however, was in episode 99, Life from Scratch, when I accidentally miscredited 
work done by filmmaker Michael Simon Toon. This error was bad enough that I re-uploaded the video. My apologies to Michael Simon Toon. If you haven't seen his short film, Protocell Circus, it really is worth a watch, and it is linked in the description. So that's the end of the season and the end of this show as a regular series. I'll be taking another respite for the rest of the year and coming back in 2021 with more content that I'll be discussing shortly. Before I do, here are some other channels that I suggest you check out. If you aren't familiar with Gutsit Gibbon, I definitely suggest you check out her content. She covers topics in a very common sense way, especially in the fields of biology and paleontology. Go. The Permian has affectionately been dubbed the Great Dying due to the sheer impact that it had on ecosystems just around the entire globe at that time period. This is the closest that life has come to complete eradication ever. I've linked to her channel in the description below. If you're more interested in focusing specifically on creationist arguments, Creationist Myths is another channel I enjoy very much and it confines itself to biological discussion of creationism. What's more, as new episodes are released, he ends the show with a Q&A so you can get more specific insights. Over time, this trait is good, this other trait is bad, so you're going to see selection for the good trait. And you're not going to change what is harmful or beneficial in that particular environment. That's simply not true in real life. In real life, selective pressures change over time. So what works at one point in time are in the... Creationist Myths is linked below in the description. This last channel should put a smile on your face. Random Evo Times is a channel I was introduced to through Jackson Wheat and I've been following ever since. Spiders are arthropods like the previously discussed honeybees, so they are a part of all the other clades that bees are a part of up to this point. Spiders and kin are close relatives of the extinct tribites, which you can tell because they lack mandibles. Then we move to Chirisarata, which only have two body segments and lack antennae, which includes the Eurypterids or sea scorpions, sea spiders, and the rather unchanged horseshoe crabs, although the placement of these groups within Chirisarata is something highly disputed. To see more of Random Evo Times, I've linked to his channel below. So what's going on with this channel? Well, as I said, this is the last season of the show, but not the last show. I fully intend to take on more creationist arguments in the future. Not only do I constantly experience new creationist arguments, but there are a few that I'm still researching or waiting for specific data on. So what can I say? This show is going to keep going as my research allows. In fact, the very next episode will be January 1st. Many of you have asked for this show to be published in book form. I am currently working on that right now. To do so, I've obviously had to retool how some things are presented since this show being visual depends on visual examples. Also, although my citations for each episode are serviceable to most viewers, correct formatting of references is an important courtesy. The book will be available for free as a a PDF to anyone who wishes to read it or cite from it. I don't monetize this show and I'm not going to monetize the book. It's my hacker mentality. I have had requests for a hard copy edition and I will certainly make that happen, but I can't offer it for free. I'll have to find the right publishing source and it will offer it for the best price. Over the past two years, I've had several debates with creationists specifically addressing the topic of real world applications. I did so with the intention of studying what their answers would be and I was not disappointed. I will be covering that in a video next year. Now that I've gotten my feet wet in debates, I am still interested in debating any creationist on the topic of real-world applications. This could be whether or not your theory or the theories associated with evolution have more real application, or since I am consistently told that real-world application doesn't make a theory true, it could simply be a debate over whether or not real-world application of an incomplete theory is a better indicator of its truth than the consistency of a theory that has no real world applications. Being a proponent of science, I'm interested in what your theory can actually do. As for the channel, I feel it's time to start investigating other pseudoscience. So yes, I will be adding other shows to cover the pseudosciences of climate change denial, flat earthism, and moon conspiracy theories, among others. Somewhere along the way, this show became more about the science for me than refuting creationist arguments. The reason I stuck solely to creationism is that the science that creationists ignore is far more interesting than their petty disagreements. There are also countless episodes in this series where I've discussed particular scientists only briefly and regrettably had to ignore their more astounding accomplishments in the interest of saving time in discussing the trivial creationist arguments. 
argument. That is a slight I intend to undo. So the channel will see some changes, but I will still be covering pseudoscience and I will still be conducting the same level of research to make my arguments. In earlier seasons, I discussed a future project on the evolution of religion, which I am still developing, but due to how it's developed, it no longer appears that YouTube will be the appropriate forum for it. I will update you all when I have news. In the meantime, I want to thank all of my viewers for 100 episodes. Your comments and suggestions definitely drove me to push harder to track down sources and make this a much better show. I even have to thank the creationists for making the arguments you made. In researching your arguments, reading your references, and seeing how they jive, I stumbled upon so much more knowledge of what scientists are actually saying and doing. This investigative process is how creationism taught me real science. If there's a creationist argument you think I should investigate, please comment below. It may become the basis for a future episode. In the meantime, subscribe and make sure you don't miss it.